My name is Carly Nevis. I'm here alongside New York Times bestselling author Naomi Klein, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So your book is titled, This Changes Everything, Capitalism Versus Climate. Why do you think this is such a battle between those two forces? Um, so, so the book looks at this conflict that we have between our economic system and what we need to do in the face of, of climate change. Um, and, and, and so the, the answer to that question is, is pretty uh, multi-layered in the sense that um, I guess the central problem we have is that capitalism is a system built to pursue short-term profits and growth at all costs. That's how our economic system measures progress and it doesn't really distinguish um, how that growth happens. Um, and we have a system right now where growth is tightly correlated uh, to consumption um, and we have a system that is built on fossil fuels. So when we consume a lot, um, we consume a lot of fossil fuels, and that's one of the major drivers of climate change. And obviously this problem is so dense, but if you were to tackle it, uh, if you were to approach it, one, one thing that you could do right now, what would be your first thing? Well, to be honest with you, you know, I don't think there is one thing that we can do in the face of this crisis. And, and part of the problem is you know we are always looking for those you know silver bullet solutions you know and for a while it was like change your light bulbs that will fix it you know um, and uh, and and a lot of the solutions that we've looked for have been consumption you know changes like what can I personally do in terms of what I buy what I consume to fix this problem right and the argument I'm making is at this late stage because you know we've made the problem a lot worse while we've been talking about it. You know, our governments have been meeting for two and a half decades talking about lowering emissions and in the meantime emissions have gone up by 60 percent and climate change is not something that is happening off in the future. It, it's, it's not a grandchildren problem now. Now it is a now problem. You know, we have the drought in California in its fourth year. Um, 2015 is shaping up to be the hottest year on record. 2014 was the hottest year on records. Um, we're seeing super storms like Sandy, Patricia, Katrina. Um, so it's here, it's really here. And that means that it's going to take um, big policy uh, solutions, not just what you can do as an individual. That doesn't mean that um, as an individual, it doesn't matter what you do. It does matter, you know, you can cut meat out of your diet. Um, you can use transit. Uh, um, you can, you know, you can shop less. You know, you can find other pursuits besides shopping. I think that's probably one of the most important things that we that we can do. Um, it's sort of, it's not like we we need to stop consuming, but I think particularly in North America, we need to get consumption into a saner place in our lives. It's become our primary pastime, and that is not sustainable. And you also mentioned that if we address this problem, it would create a better world, kind of a positive spin on it. Yeah. How do you think that would be the case? Well, I don't think it's inevitable, but I think that as we transition off fossil fuels, which requires um, dramatic changes to our economy, we're talking about changing our energy grids, we're talking about changing how we move ourselves around, we can design new systems in a way that solves multiple problems at once. And we know that we face, you know, we live in a time of, of overlapping crises. We aren't just facing the climate crisis. We're facing a crisis of inequality, particularly of racial inequality. Um, and we, as we uh, uh, confront the climate crisis, we need to come up with these win-win solutions. And there are examples of this. You know, Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York City, um, when he announced on Earth Day a new climate plan for New York City, he, uh, it was designed to tackle inequality uh, in a city you know, with a huge inequality problem. That's why he was elected. Um, and, uh, and, and, and lower emissions at the same time. So that would mean, for instance, really prioritizing investments in public transit because lack of affordable public transit is a big um, driver of inequality, particularly of racial inequality. A lot of African Americans um, ha face huge commutes just to get to where the jobs are. So you just need to be smart about it and you need to prioritize it. And this is often called climate justice. Um, as opposed to just climate action, which would just sort of look at this exclusively from the perspective of carbon in the atmosphere. Climate justice says, okay, we face these overlapping crises. How do we solve multiple problems at once? And to me, it was kind of ironic you're here on election day, officially a year from the 2016 presidential election. For you, what candidate in the race right now do you think can tackle this issue of climate change? Or is there even a candidate that will do so? Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, honestly, I would say that Bernie Sanders has a has a really good record on climate. Um, he, you know, he he was um, one of the few voices in Washington supporting the fight against the Keystone XL pipeline. We just saw a big breakthrough in that with TransCanada, the company behind that pipeline, withdrawing its application, um, basically sort of saying we're going to withdraw before we can be turned down, like I'm breaking up with you before you break up with me, sort of thing. Or, and you know, another interpretation is they're waiting you know, hoping they're going to have a Republican president in, in a year from now and that then they'll get a rubber stamp. But they're basically throwing in the towel on the idea of getting approval under Obama. That's a major victory for the climate movement. So for the next 10 years, if a presidential candidate were to come in that would address this issue, mm -hmm. what can we see? Well, so what we need to see is we need, we need to see emissions dropping uh, very quickly. Year on year, we need to see emission reductions of around 8% a year. Um, and, uh, and so what I would like to see is uh, um, a, a candidate or a president, a leader, uh, that was really committed to bringing the fight to close the inequality gap together with, with uh, uh, the fight against climate change. Uh, so what that would mean in practice would mean um, big investments in the public sphere to deal with the impacts of climate change, right? Because we know um, that we are going to face more and more of these uh, extreme weather events, droughts, storms, that we've already locked in. You know, we, we, you know, we have to, at the same time, prepare for what we've already unleashed and also do everything we can to not make it worse than it needs to be, right? So this is, this is why, and I am optimistic in a sense, if we, if, we, if we stop looking away from the crisis, if we get out of our denial, this can be the biggest job creation program this country has ever seen. In fact, it would need to be if you're going to make those kinds of investments in the public sphere. Well, Naomi, that is all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us on the News House. I definitely learned a lot, and I hope our viewers will too. Thank you.